Dear brothers and sisters, the message today will be on receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The purpose of this lesson is first to help those who have not yet been baptized in the Spirit, and second, to help Spirit-filled believers pray for others to receive the Holy Spirit. Every believer can help anyone receive the fullness of the Spirit. Acts 19 verses 1 to 6 says, And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Notice that Paul did not pray asking for the Spirit, but he prayed that the brothers might receive him. And Acts 8 verses 14 and 15 says, Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, They sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. If you are saved, then you can receive the power of the Spirit. Anyone who has been saved, washed by the blood of the Lamb, can receive the Spirit immediately. As it says in Acts 2 verses 37 and 38, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter says that once we have received the forgiveness of sins, we will receive the Holy Spirit. Some people think that they must be perfect before receiving the Spirit, but every believer in Jesus has received the gift of righteousness by faith. Also, they have been completely cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Such a believer is qualified to enter heaven today. If you believe you are saved and can enter heaven today, you can then also receive heaven within you today. Unfortunately, many still try to earn God's favor. We do not receive the Spirit because we deserve it. It is all about the righteousness of Christ that has been placed in us. The believers in the church of the city of Corinth were carnal and had many wrong practices, yet Paul prayed that they would be filled with the Spirit and they could receive all the spiritual gifts. Obviously, Paul was not supporting carnality, but was praying that the believers there would have that which would lead them to grow in God, leaving the flesh behind. Believe that when you receive the laying on of hands, the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon you. Any brother can pray for you. There is no need to be someone with a special title or position in the church. Every believer can pray for others to receive the Spirit. However, there are brothers that are more used in this ministry. As a brother is praying for you, with the laying on of hands, begin to declare you are receiving the Spirit. All things of God are received by faith. You can receive the baptism in the Spirit alone at home or during worship in church, but there can often be someone praying over you with a laying on of hands. When the Spirit starts to move, it is important that you do not resist Him. The Spirit will put supernatural words on your lips. However, it is up to you to pronounce these words, cooperating with Him. As it says in Acts 2.4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You must always remember that the Holy Spirit does not take complete control over you, forcing you to do anything. The Bible does not say that it is the Spirit that speaks in tongues. We speak in tongues. Acts 19, 6 says, And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. And 1 Corinthians 14 verses 2 and 4 says, For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands him, 
but he utters mysteries in the spirit. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. In these verses, we see that the Spirit supernaturally gives words to speak, but it is the people who have to speak. You need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in spiritual languages is not entirely you, nor is it solely the Holy Spirit. Speaking in other tongues is a cooperation between you and the Holy Spirit. If you realize that there is a barrier or fear within you, you must address it before receiving the ministry. Such restrictions must be removed before you can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. For example, some people teach that we need to be very careful about this experience. They say that you may receive something artificial instead of the Spirit. This is absurd because the Lord Jesus clearly said that if we ask for bread, we will not receive a stone, and if we ask for fish, we will not receive a snake. Luke 11 verses 11 to 13 says, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Rest assured that you will not receive anything else if you ask the Father to be filled with the Spirit. Jesus used serpents and scorpions as symbols of demons. If you pray for the Holy Spirit, the devil cannot have space. The same, however, does not apply to people that are not born again. When an unsaved person seeks mystical experiences, he attracts snakes and scorpions upon himself. But if you are a child of God, the Father promises that He will give you the Holy Spirit. So throw away all fear and all confusion. At the moment that the words begin to come, open your mouth and start using your own vocal cords because the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. Do not speak words in your own language. Audibly utter anything the Spirit gives you to speak, regardless of how it sounds. Then keep on praising God with these words until the tongue becomes ever more fluent. The Lord Jesus said in John 7 verse 37 that if anyone is thirsty, they should come to him and drink. It is the same principle. No one can drink with their mouths closed. When we open our mouths by faith, the Spirit will grant us the words we should speak. When you start flowing in tongues, ignore those around you. There are people teaching a lot of confusion. They make their own experiences some sort of formula. There are accounts of people who received the Spirit when the minister poured water on them or other eccentric experiences. The problem is when we turn these particular experiences into a standard for the moment of the baptism in the Spirit. There are ministers that ask people to keep repeating specific phrases until they would receive it. Despite these distractions and strange ways of ministry, many brothers and sisters still have received, but many very sincere believers have also gone away very disappointed. Don't let things like that distract you. Being filled with the Spirit is the most important thing in your life. This will be the center of your entire Christian life. Remember, this is not to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. From now on, you can be filled with the Spirit continually. Brothers and sisters, leave your questions and prayer requests in the comment section below. This is Lesson 24 of 72 Lessons of the Spiritual Maturity Course. So check if you are subscribed so you will not miss future lessons. And if you want to see the other lessons, check out the Spiritual Maturity Course playlist on my channel. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.